As the world continues to prioritize clean energy solutions, nuclear energy is stepping back into the spotlight, offering what is seen as powerful and sustainable alternatives to traditional fossil fuels. Nanonuclear Energy is a leading advanced nuclear energy and tech company with a focus on developing portable clean energy solutions. It trades under NNE at the NASDAQ. Here to talk about the company and what it does is CEO James Walker. James, thank you so much for joining us today. All right, let's start with this. For people who don't know, explain a little bit about nanonuclear energy. Okay, so um, as a background to our company, we began as a microreactor company, which is developing very the smallest possible reactor you can get so reactors that are destined for remote locations like mining projects island communities military bases disaster relief areas almost like a nuclear battery on the back of a truck that you ship anywhere you want in the world and then put it down plug it in and start outputting energy like a like a uh, like a condensed uh, diesel generator that doesn't need refueling for 30 years all right. And then some people may hear the term nuclear energy and be a little scared and not think it coincides with the concept of clean energy solutions. So how does your company ensure its development of clean energy? So, I mean, the nuclear is a wonderful um, gift to mankind anyway. Like I, uh, when, when people think of nuclear, I think that there's probably a big difference between um, the reality of nuclear and the public mm -hmm. perception of it. So... Nuclear is already the safest form of energy we've ever devised. If you look at it, um, deaths per gigawatt hour, it's even safer than wind or solar or, or, or something like that. Um, and it's already a zero carbon emitting um, uh, form of power that we can put out there. But the, the good thing is that like, it's also the only type of fuel that um, you know where all of your waste is at any one moment down to the last atom. And it and generates an, in, an incredibly small amount just because that power density is, is so great. So if you were to take all the reactors that have ever operated in the United States, um, and uh, including all the aircraft carriers, submarines, all those reactors too, and, and concentrate the waste in one place, um, it wouldn't fill a football field. So you've got the safest, cleanest form of energy um, you know, with, with zero carbon emissions as well. Speaking of waste, a lot of people are focused on recovery efforts after natural disasters like Hurricanes, Helene and Milton. Now, your microreactors are positioned as a clean energy solution for disaster relief. Can you explain how those reactors work in practice and the impact they can have on emergency situations like hurricanes? So d disaster relief areas are a, a key sector where we want to target. And um, the, the issue with rebuilding anywhere that's been hit... Um, Say, for instance, with the with the recent hurricane, um, uh, Hurricane Milton, it's left almost two billion residents um, without power. So the the thing with rebuilding efforts is that they are they are predicated and dependent on the amount of power you can supply the rebuilding effort. So if you have a, a portable system that you can ship in and put down, plug in, and then just start the re rebuilding process. Um, you can accelerate the, um, the the rebuild for any disaster relief hit areas. And so the idea here would be, yeah, bring that reactor in, plug it down, um, start putting out outputting power, and that would power construction crews, recovery efforts, um, power um, provide power or um, with desalination for uh, people who have been uh, who have lost their homes. So better than like a uh, generator, because a lot of people are like, oh, we need a generator in this kind of situation. Yeah, so, I mean, if you take a, a generator as an example, you, you can ship it in, you can put it down, but as soon as you've done that, um, you know, the power density in comparison to nuclear fuel is, is very low. So you're still in a position where you have to ship in a lot of diesel um, to power those generator systems. So a microactor gives you a massive advantage in that you don't need to ship in that diesel to sustain that recovery effort. Um, the, the, the power is being built there. And if you need it for mm. 10, 15 years, you've got that power source there to, to output power to help with rebuilding. Because sometimes it's not just immediate relief. It's, it's, it's a sustained, consistent effort to reestablish the community. And that can take a lot of power and a lot of time. And then where do you see the greatest demand for nuclear power? It's a, it's a good question because um, in in recent years um, the tech industry has made 
um, huge overtures that they're very interested in utilizing nuclear power to power their tech and data centers. So mm. while bef b b before that, I would have said the we were targeting um, some of the biggest untapped markets. So um, if you take island communities as an example, you've got hundreds of millions of people across the world that basically subsist on diesel generators. And that's mm. the same for a lot of remote locations. So those remote communities that, um, that live on uh, diesel generators, um, being able to target those for the first time because those are not those destinations are not suitable for wind or solar or hydro or geothermal or even gas or coal or transmission lines because of where they are and how remote they are and the and the construction um, work that would be needed to actually connect them to mainline grid systems. Um, so it's it's probably two things. I think remote communities all around the world and suddenly we can introduce things like desalination, vertical farms, um, power for industry in, in anywhere we want in the world for the first time ever. Um, but it's, it's coupled with this massive drive from the tech industry to have power to sustain their development efforts as well. All right. Our thanks to James Walker, CEO of Nano Nuclear Energy. He also happens to be a nuclear physicist.